Greetings everyone, it's Conrad from ConradRocks.net and I have a, a testimony for you today. I met Nick and I know him as 2012 underscore fire, that fire dude. And I was cruising some blabs and there was a guitar blab. Blab is not that large yet, but it will be. And I'm trying to meet Christians online over there. And I saw him on a guitar blab, I didn't really think much of it. But then we started kind of crossing paths in the Christian blabs. God started lighting him up immediately. And it's like, you know, it's like the mouse pointer over a person. Pay attention to this person. He's anointed like Lucas Bessie, <laughs> right? So I found out this guy is on fire for God. He uh, plays guitar. He worships. We worship pretty much the same way. Uh, well, similar. I saw him periscope a worship uh session in his house on Periscope. I thought, man, that's that's what we do. And it's I'm like, I gotta I gotta talk to this guy. So he came in on Lucas Bessie's testimony and at the end he began to operate in the prophetic. I'm like going, man, I really gotta get this guy's testimony. So Susan and I we were doing a Bible study in First Corinthians chapter six. He hopped in in the tail end and I'm like going, you know, Let's get this guy's testimony. So he was there, he cammed up, and we did it. Um, so here it is. Hey, Nick, we're recording. <laughs> All right. Hey, how's everybody Dude, doing? Susan and I, ever since we met you, I mean, I, I know that I met you in like this guitar uh, blab. That's right. And uh, we're like, this guy's on fire for Jesus. I saw you did a, 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 a Spirit Lab worship periscope in your in your house or something i thought man i've got to hear what's up with me <laughs> so what's up man tell us about yourself well um i'm from sudbury ontario canada i'm about uh, four hours north of toronto ontario and uh came to the lord in 97 uh, that, that's when the lord called me to himself uh <clears throat> i grew up uh, as an alcoholic started drinking at eight, eight years old and uh Got into the drugs through all that stuff and uh, into, uh, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll type of mentality and wanting to be a party animal and life of the party. Um, but actually, if you press rewind on the life button, um, one of the major uh, events in my uh, childhood, when I was four years old, I was hit by a car, pronounced dead for about 20 minutes. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, so my mother came out and father came out and all that stuff, and they called the ambulance. And uh, and then my mom did what any good mother should do. She uh, went into her room, got on her knees, and she prayed. And uh, as she's praying, she said uh, she got a vision from the Lord, and she saw Jesus on the cross, and Jesus spoke to her in this vision. And he says, woman, your son will live, and he will be safe. And so as this is happening, my aunt and my uncle, who were uh, our, uh, who were our neighbors, uh, she comes out and they both come out and start praying over me. Um, just as they're about to start praying, uh, the ambulance gets there. And so the attendee, the, uh, the medic, the paramedic, he uh, looks at my aunt and he says, you can't do that. And she just took her authority in Christ and she just looks at him and she says, trust me, I know what I'm doing. And he said, okay. And he just let her lay hands on me, right? So here's my aunt. She lays hands and, you know, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to bring him back. And as she did that, I, I came back too. And so that was one of the major events in my, in my childhood that really anchored that I believe God existed. So I knew about God. And growing up as a Catholic, I, grew, I knew about God, but I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember this experience of being a four-year-old? Do you remember that well, or you just know what your mom and aunt told you? Uh, I actually, I don't remember the physical stuff. All I remember is before, um, before getting hit by a car, I wanted to go see my friend who was uh, on the other side of the street, and it was a pretty busy street, and he had just gotten home, and I was so excited, like I want to go see my friend. I want to go see my friend. And my brother's like, no, you can't go. He was eight years old, right? He says, don't go, don't go. And I was just so excited I didn't listen. And it's good to listen to your big brother once in a while. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes they know what they're talking about. 
You know, it's just like our elders in church and our elders around us. Sometimes they got some real wisdom and it's good to listen. Um, well, obviously, at that time, I didn't listen. So I got hit by a car. I remember that much. And uh, I do remember seeing a light when I was up there. And uh, for years, though, I always questioned the Lord, like, what really happened to me up there? What was I going through? And uh, hey, David, it's good to see you, man. Um, invited some people on my list, so they're coming in now, I think. Um, Amen. I'm glad you guys could be here and listen to the testimony. As you know, there's power. There, there is power in a testimony. I love what it says in Revelation 12, 11. They overcame him, right? Buckethead, the enemy. They overcame him by the blood of the land and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto the death. And so while we're sharing testimony and while I'm sharing tonight, I know that, you know, some people are going to be touched and, and it's not, you know, so much the speaker, but it's who he's speaking about. And it's what God has done in that person's life. That's powerful. Amen. So, uh, yeah, that was awesome. man. <laughs> so that was one of the major events. And, uh, the year after that, uh, my dad took his life and that, that was a real tragic event for, you know, my growth. And, uh, I, I was able to, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. But once I was saved, I, I got to understand that a lot of the roots and, and, and for you guys that are fatherless out there, you know, you guys I'm sure can relate to this. But sometimes we don't fully understand. But there's such a need, man, such a need in the world for a father's love and, and for a father figure in our lives. It, it's such an important thing that, thing that God has designed and ordained that when we have that lack of father's love, it can really damage a child. And so I was kind of a byproduct of that. Um, my mother, she, she loved us like crazy. She did everything she could to encourage us and everything in her motherhood that she could do. She did, you know, to the best of her capabilities. And I certainly can't complain about that. If there's any love in me, you know, uh, she's definitely part of the blame for that. Um, <laughs> and so... So growing up without a father, you know, there was that need, that desire just to be loved, to be accepted, to be uh, approved as a man, as a young man, as a young boy. And, uh, you know, I, I remember I would watch and I would look and everybody else had, quote unquote, had a dad. Everybody else went to soccer. Everybody else, you know, up here were part of the hockey team, so to speak, you know, except for me. And that's the kind of mentality I had back then, you know, and that feeling of abandonment and that feeling of being... Uh, you know, rejected came out of that. And so I searched for love through uh, hanging out with my uncles and stuff like that because they always reminded me of my father. I would ask them stories about my dad. And <clears throat> because of that, a lot, a lot of times uh, I would drink with them. And so that's how I started drinking when I was eight years old. And from there, it got worse and worse and got into drugs. Um, and so here I am, 22 years old. Uh, I had moved out the year before from Sudbury, Ontario to Ottawa, Ontario. And, uh, you know, by that time I was doing uh, some crack. I was doing coke and uh, had a really bad cocaine experience. And and I remember that that same week I had been like <laughs> unintentionally fasting, you know, not saved and just on a liquid diet, you know, drinking like crazy, doing drugs and uh and I, and, I, and I feel to share this part here. I don't always share this part, uh, but I wasn't saved yet. And, and I'm thinking, okay, how could I get wasted tonight? How could I get drunk? I'm flat broke. I've been drinking and doing drugs all week, and I'm still thirsty, still want to drink. And this voice spoke to me, and it wasn't God, but this voice spoke to me and said, if you go to this particular, it was like an Irish bar. If you go to this bar, there's going to be a guy there who just wants a friend, just wants to hang out with somebody, and he's going to buy your booze tonight. And so... You know, in my lost state, I listened and I I stepped out and sure enough, I end up at this bar. There's a guy there. We start talking this and that and he starts buying me booze. We end up drinking and uh, we end up on the other side of the border. And see, between between Qu Quebec and, and, and Ontario, what happens is the bars shut down um, one hour earlier in Ontario. And so there's still an extra hour if you go to the Quebec side. So I remembered this bar and I went to the Quebec side. And long story short, I end up at this girl's house and she wanted to sleep with me. And that night, whatever morals I had left back then, still they kicked in. And I was like, no, I'm not going to sleep with this woman. And so, but what ended up happening, one of her friends show up and 
he was doing some cocaine. He's like, hey, man, you want to do a few lines? I'm like, sure. Uh, <laughs> Mor- morals in the fornication department, but not the sorcery department. Right, exactly. Ph- pharmacia. Keep going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was still bound, right? I was still demonic, mm. you know. But there was still some form of morals left somewhere. <laughs> and then... So, you know, and, and we never know, even in my sinful state, could have been God really protecting me from something that I could have, you know, never know. Um, however, mm-hmm. God in his wisdom. Uh, okay, so I'm going through this thing. And what happens when, when you're doing cocaine, your body is like, yeah. And the attitude is like, yeah, party time. You know, let's do this, whatever it is. And it's just go, go, go attitude. And you feel 10 feet tall and bulletproof, right? But. What was happening in the physical, my body's like, uh, hey, Nick, it's been like a week, dude, and we barely had any sleep. Uh, I want to shut down here. (laughs) So so I can't sit down because I'm tormented. You know, I feel too hyper and I can't stand up because I feel like I'm going to pass out. And and I'm like, holy freak, man, Uh, this is a freak out. So I call my buddy Dan. I said, Dan, you got to come and get me. I don't know where I'm at. Don't here's the address. I'm somewhere in Gatineau, Quebec. And please come get me. So he comes to get me. And that weekend, I was living with my, uh, I lived with a family member, and that family member wasn't around that weekend. And so I literally crawled through the hallways of the apartment. And uh, thanks, David. God bless you, man. And so, so I get to the edge of my bed and I say this prayer. And it was a very, it's like the Macedonian prayer, like help. <laughs> and so, I started to pray, and I'm like, God, man, I really need your help, Lord. I said, Father God, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know any religious prayer for this. I said, but Lord, I need you down here in real life, real time. Not some fairy tale way out in the sky, and you kind of watch mysteriously over me. I said, no, man, I really need your help, God. And I surrender my spirit to you. Whatever you want to do with me, wherever you are, whoever you are, God, I I surrender to you. Just just change my life. I don't want to do this anymore. And so a week later, I'm walking down the road, and here's this preacher guy. And you have to understand the, the mentality that I came from this small town, and a small French Catholic town, basically. And you never hear anybody preach at all, at all, at all. Not even the priest. There's no preaching happening. You know, you don't hear, glory <laughs> to God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. You don't hear that Amen. kind of stuff up here, you know. And. And so here's this guy right on the street, and he's just giving her, man, like 110 mi- 10 miles an hour. And he's just, God, save the sex military man from crack cocaine, from suicide. And he's just going, and God, save this man from military abuse. And he starts giving his testimony like that, and he starts preaching the gospel. And, you know, in my mind, I wasn't really understanding everything he was saying, but it's like God had a grip on me. And I was stuck there, and I couldn't even move. And I was just listening to everything he had to say. And it was hitting, it was hitting down here in the heart. And I was getting convicted in a positive way. And so he comes up to me, starts talking to me, you know, but back then I still had all my, my guards inside of my heart. Right. And here's this guy, this religious quote unquote guy talking to me and telling me about Jesus and stuff. And I'm looking around like, I hope nobody's seeing me because if anybody sees me, they're going to think I'm a religious freak. Right. And that was my pride speaking on the inside. So then he, he turns to me and he, he poses the question. He says, did you ever take that step of faith and surrender your life to Jesus Christ? Did you ever accept him as your Lord and your Savior? And so my reaction was, well, I'm Catholic. As if to say, well, hey, I got my membership card. I'm going in. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. That's what a lot and of people think. It's true. you know. And, and he says, no, that's not. I, I wasn't asking what if you're Catholic or whatever. He says, "What I'm asking is, did you ever surrender your life to Him, and yeah. and recognize before Him that you know that you're a sinner and that you need a Savior?" I said, "No, I don't believe I have." He says, "Would you like to pray with me?" So, in my prideful heart, I'm thinking, "Well, some other place, some other time, maybe." Uh, but as he asked me, it comes out, yes. Even though I was thinking this, I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> that's God. Hey, God yeah. That's right. So it comes out. Yeah, yeah, sure. Where would you like to pray? You know, and he's like, right here, right now. I'm like, OK, so I start praying with this guy and and I'm just going to say it like it is. It's just going to be honest again on this. 
as I'm praying, I'm asking God, like, please, Lord, this doesn't sound very Catholic, this prayer, but you know my heart. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and as if God doesn't know all this stuff, right? And and so I prayed and I asked the Lord Jesus into my heart, confessed him as my Lord, as my Savior. I yeah. asked him to come in. And that moment there, it's like I, I could always see this picture of Jesus talking to the Father saying, Dad, you see that door in his heart? It's open. Just a little crack. I'm going in. I'm going in. And that was that little faith that I did have. You see, faith is not this thing, this whole argument of, you know, carnal reasoning. It, it's this trust, this faith that you have in him. And it's an open door for love to come and sit down inside of you. And so I opened up the door and I said, yes, Lord, I accept you as my Lord, my Savior. And that moment there is where my life took a 180. And immediately I heard the voice of the Lord and he spoke to me and See, I didn't understand it in the moment, but he spoke to me and he said, take this guy out for a coffee, pay him a coffee. You know, So I did. And I go out for a coffee. We started to talk. And all of a sudden he points at me and he says, I see you playing guitar. And I see you playing really fast. And God says he's going to use that for his glory. And he says, I also see you sharing with Jesus with people across the world. So I'm freaked out. Like, how does this guy know this? Right. So I asked him, I said, how do you know this? He, he says, because the Holy Spirit is showing this to me. Right. And that's biblical. It's in the Bible, man, that in the last days, God says he would pour out of his spirit upon all flesh and his sons and his daughters would prophesy. Our sons, our daughters will prophesy. And he says, your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And he says, I will pour out of my spirit upon my handmaids, my manservants, you know, show wonders in the heavens, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke for the great notable day of the Lord. Sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood. He says, all these things will happen when? Just when the Bible was written? No, in the last days. Well, let me ask that question. Are we still in the last days? Amen. Right. Yeah. So God's still doing the stuff. Amen. God gave us tools to get the job done. Praise God. Were you playing guitar back then? Or yes, you... I was. Okay. And that was always one of my aspirations was to, to play fast. And, and so he was right on the mark on this thing. And so it turns out. Go ahead. Keep going, man. With the, uh, keep going. I want to hear more. <laughs> so, so I get saved. All of a sudden, I start thinking different. I start feeling different. The grass is greener all of a sudden. The sun is brighter. And it's like everything is brand new all over again. And all of a sudden, these desires to do right, these desires to walk in holiness started to birth inside of me. And I start getting this desire to do things I've never done before, like actually read something and not fall asleep. And I started to, I started to read the Bible 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours a day. Just this hunger coming over me like a sponge. And as I'm reading those words, it's like they're jumping off. They're jumping off of the pages into my heart, into my spirit. And, and there's just a knowing inside that this is truth. And, and so God started to work in my heart. God started to bring me into prayer and into fasting and, and, and into getting closer with him. And, and I really, really wanted to know him. And, and I think it, it, it's it's possibly it's different than somebody I think who's grown up in church all their life in, in Christianity. And, you know, they've heard the word over and over and over again. And it's like, okay, this is what my mom, my dad believes. This is what they brought me into. I think there's a difference between that and where you personally get revelation from God, where God himself and you, you're hanging out with the Lord, you're reading the word and it becomes truth inside of you. And God reveals it to you, makes it real to you. And you know that you know that this is the truth, man. And it starts making you free. So, so here I am. I just got saved, reading the Bible. Got these desires sp springing up inside of me. This guy's coming over. He's visiting me. You know, and this is why I believe, guys, it's so important, man. It's so important to be real with people. You know, he would come, not with a suit and tie and his hair all nice and all cut and, you know, with a five-point sermon pamphlet page and all this stuff he would come he'd sit down right on my floor right on the rug with me right beside and talk to me and talk real life real time about stuff you know t-shirt jeans and it made me see that wow this guy's for real man 
Because I always had this image that, you know, the so-called ministers or priests or pastors, that they would, they're way up there. They got a connection with God, but I don't and I can't, but he can. And they're dressed all nice and they're, they're different and they have a whole different life than I should as a believer. And God started to break that religious mold right off of me by showing me. You know, you look at Jesus, you look at the disciples, how, the, how they were called. Man, they were fishermen. You know, some of these guys were, they were not well, well trained in, in the knowledge of things. You know, it says that these were ignorant and unlearned men. But yet they perceived that they had been with Jesus. Amen. So, They've been with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. And how, how do you perceive that? You know, if you're not even saved, you don't know Christianity, but, but you just know that there's something different about these guys. You know, you might not be able to put that into word. People might not be able to put that into word. But when you've been with Jesus, you've been hanging out with the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and you come out of that place with him, people are going to notice. And they're just going to know there's something different about you. Man, I've had, you know, for the glory of God, I've had new age people come to me and say, like, there's like a white aura around you. Yeah. I could tell you that your soul is pure. You know, they're using their language to explain something that God is actually trying to show them. You know, and that could show them. You know what that aura is? That's God's Holy Spirit, man. That's because I hang out with Jesus and he's pure. He's holy, you know, and it's an opportunity to share. Instead of saying, well, that's not an aura. That's totally demonic what you're saying to me, you know. And it's true. It's demonic that the way they're taught. But that's, that might not be the, the righteous, the, the wise approach to, to share with them. Because a lot of times what happens, people would Im immediately shut the door of communication if you come at them that way, you know, and hold up a big sign to them and yeah. smash it in their face kind of thing. <laughs> you know, that's not usually the, the approach that wins souls to the kingdom. Um, so but what, yeah, so what about the transformation? With the, the, you said you were an alcoholic, drugs, and so forth. How did, how did that uh, turn around? Well, the interesting thing is that... Um, you know, and I think just out of habit, not a lifestyle, I, uh, I was still trying to, to do these kind of things. But the, it's like the desire was dying away and the beer didn't taste the same. The, the, the drugs, they didn't give the same kind of high. And what would happen every time I try to go to the beer store, that guy that brought me to the Lord, God would put him on my path and he'd be like, hey, brother, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And that's a lot, massive conviction, right? And I'm like, oh, hey, yeah, hey, I, I'm doing good, man. Yeah, it's good to see you. <laughs> but God was convicting my heart, you know, and I tried to go back to the bars, and it was not the same, man. Everything was different, and I didn't feel the same. I didn't talk the same. You know, I, I remember this one lady that I knew that I knew I could have picked her up, you know. And in, in my pride, whatever. And instead of doing that, I just start to talk with her. I said, you know what? I'm just going to sit down right here right now. And we're just going to talk. And I'm going to show you that not every guy just wants to pick you up. That there is a God above who loves you and who cares about you. Amen. <laughs> so I started to change. And, and, and those desires started to die away. And then less and less, I would do these things. And I remember one time I, I'm smoking drugs and I, I go into my room and I'm like, man, I don't even want to be with people right now. And I was totally out of my, my character because I was the type of guy wanting to be life of the party and always up and up with stuff, right? And all of a sudden I'm hidden and I'm like, no, there's something. That I don't want to do this anymore. And so God was convicting me. But the big moment where I knew that I knew that I was totally set free is when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That day was absolutely amazing, man. Uh, so what, what happened there is I, I'm reading the Bible, and I'm reading that the disciples, they receive power, power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and power over all manner of sickness and disease, like Matthew 10. And I'm reading that these guys, they had the Holy Spirit on them. And I'm reading that there, there's this promise of the Holy Spirit. And so I asked the guy who brought me to the Lord. I said, Terry, I said, hey, man, can I have this too? Or is it just the big pastors and the preachers who got the big ministry, you know? Like, are they the only guys that, that have this because they need it? Uh, or can everybody have it? <laughs> he says, no. He says, everybody can have Amen. this. He's, I said, well, when can I have this? He says, when God says. That was such a good answer, man. He says, when God says, when you're ready. I'm like, okay. So I kept reading and I kept praying. And I'm like, God, prepare me for this. However, whatever I got to do, you know? And so... End up one day where, where uh, it turns out we're painting chairs. And uh, he had invited me to help paint the chairs. And uh, 
So I go paint some chairs and uh, I had heard this amazing testimony of one pastor. His name was Len. Len Carter was his name. And uh, he received the Holy Spirit. He was all alone in his room and uh, he's praying. And all of a sudden, like a mighty rushing, mighty wind, it comes through his window. He gets filled with the Holy Ghost, man. And like filled to the brim, man. And he starts talking in tongues and all that after. And so I, I ask, I had asked God, I said, Lord, if it's your will, I would like this guy to be there when I get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so that day, as we're painting in the chairs, who comes walking in but Len Carter, that same man. <laughs> and so uh, the pastor that was there at the, the revival center, it was called the Ottawa Revival Center. Uh, it turns out he was also from my hometown and he used to be a bank robber and he used to rob pharmacies and stuff. And uh, for for drugs and uh, he got saved in jail. The Lord visited him in jail through uh, uh, I think it was Ernie Ernie Hollins. I think was his name. He was a, a prison minister. He had given him some information and stuff, and so he turned to the Lord in jail. Got saved. You know, he comes out of jail. He becomes a pastor. So he was there. The guy that brought me to the Lord was there. Len Carter was there, and so they all started praying over me. And again, you got to understand, I come from this Catholic background where. You know, the most you'll hear is like this kind of, my father can beat your father at <laughs> long <Lord does." laughs> That's funny. <laughs> or, you know, the peace of the Lord be with you. And everybody gets up and with you, you know. Amen. And, and I'm not mocking some, some of the great things of God that, you know, that, that some of the Catholics actually follow that are biblical and godly. But I'm just saying it, it's, it's this, this religious thing, this thing that God... Uh, upheld the, the the Pharisees and the Sadducees for vain repetitions, all that stuff. Same thing every Sunday, every time. Right. And so I'd never seen people on fire for God. And here's these guys, they start praying and they're like, father, fill them with the Holy ghost. Lord Jesus, I can feel the anointing right now. And I got all these guys around me and they're all praying in fervency like that. And, and on the inside, I'm like, God, what the heck is going on here? I said, Lord, man, I give, I gave you my life and I trusted you. And now this looks like some weird cult thing, man. God, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and so, and? so the Lord speaks to me in my heart. and He says, Nick, he says, never mind about them right now. He says, don't even pay attention to that. He says, just surrender. Give it all to me. Surrender it all to me right now. Trust me. As God tells me this right after he speaks this. Pastor Andy whispers in my ear and he says, Nick, God says, just surrender it all to him right now. Amen. Confirmation <laughs> right there. Amen. Just exactly what God had just said. And I'm like, okay, this is for real, Lord. So I just surrendered, you know, and surrender, guys, it's not this. Well, how do I surrender? Well, let's say you're going to get busted for something. How do you surrender to the cops? Come out with your hands up, right? Well, it's the same thing with Jesus. You come out with your hands up, praising him. You just surrender. It's just, okay. I give myself to you. I just surrender it all, all of it, man. And so that moment when I surrendered, this river of love comes from heaven. And I could feel it like on me, in me, through me. And it, the only way I could describe it, like that river of love, and I could tangibly feel it like hot oil, but like water, but like hot oil with love just overflowing. And I started to weep like crazy. And I could just feel the love of God the Father through this. And all of a sudden, I feel this burden come off of me. I didn't even know it was there. This burden of sin just totally removed itself from me. And I knew that I knew that I knew that that day I was free from that bondage to alcohol, to drugs, to all my past, the things I had gone through. And it was total freedom from those things. You know? Amen. No, so, I, I, I was ask, I was going to ask, a lot of people are, are struggling. With, we were talking about coming out of this stuff in Corinthians. You know, as you go towards God, the desire changes. You're a new creature. But as, as soon as you're saved, not everybody gets delivered of everything all at once. It's, it's a progress. And That's then you, you were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then thanks for describing how that is, because a lot of people, when they give their testimony, they just say, well, I was saved. And. I'm like, well, this way we know exactly what happened to you. So thanks for sharing that. Amen. Amen. That's an honor. Then what? <laughs> <laughs> well, then um, it's, it's very interesting because God took everything away, all my bondages that I was, you know, and I was set free and I knew that I knew. But there was this one that he kept. 
Okay. And I don't want to say he kept, but there was this one, I guess I was still struggling with. And I wanted to be free from this thing, but it's like a stupid thing just would not leave me. And, you know, guys, I know we've all been through some stuff. I had a, I'll just say like it is, I had a nitro drive. My sex drive was like in nitro mode all the time. And I really struggled with that, but he took everything away except for that. But I knew I started to discover that I have this new identity, that I am a son of the living God because I've been born again. The word of God says, if any man be found in Christ, behold, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Now, in that area, I wasn't seeing that, you know, but it doesn't change that that is who I was, that I am now a son of the living God. I now have a new nature inside of me. And so I just hung on to that truth. And I said, Lord, your word says that you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And I know this is not who I am in Christ Jesus. This is not my new identity. You have taken the old man. You've crucified him. You know, and thank God for good teachers that are out there. And thank God for the word, man, and the comforter, which is the best teacher, the Holy Ghost, man. You listen to the Holy Ghost teach you and he'll teach you 100% accurate doctrine 100% of the time. And he knows exactly how to reveal it to you and how to share it with you. And, you know, it's not to say God doesn't use people that are also anointed because he does. But but the key is, is that you be filled with the Holy Spirit. and You be listening to him. Now, wasn't that amazing? Um, Nick, 2012 underscore fire on Twitter, 2012 underscore fire on Blab. You can find him there. I will put his links in the show notes. You can find him you know, on Blab and on Twitter. Amen. So that was an amazing testimony. Unfortunately, I, I wanted to talk to him for another like four days. <laughs> I mean, that was an amazing testimony. He's on fire for Jesus. He has a relationship with the Spirit of God. He talks, he, he knows the Lord rather than just knowing about and that about the Lord. And that's a passion that he has. And that's a passion that we have here at ConradRocks.net. Anyway, so check him out. Stay tuned. We're probably going to talk to him some more. I mean, he's, yeah, we're all excited about Nick, 2012 underscore fire. All right, God bless you. Keep, you know, and, and I want to uh, remind you guys, you can get the Conrad Rocks app. It's It kind of just makes things easier. A lot of you guys are going to some of my social media and stuff on your phone. You might as well just get the app. It's free, and everything's right there in one place. Um, so it, it rocks. It's the Conrad Rocks app. You can get it on Apple and on Android. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher.